Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to uh, Planet, I'm just going to call it Planet Coaster. It's a little bit of everything this one to be honest. I think I'm going to label it as a theme makers toolkit video but we actually are starting off in Pinewood Hills but we don't do enough to really warrant a whole sort of Pinewood Hills episode. So um, so yeah, we're starting off with a little bit of work on the gift shop, mostly just putting in gifts to be honest with you. I've uh, perused the uh, theme makers toolkit and, uh, and got some, uh, there's really awesome stuff turning up now. Like really people are really starting to find the vibe with it. Uh, the first one I'm putting down here is the Planet Coaster board game. That's actually by me. So, you know, I would put that in there, wouldn't I? But then we're going to still we're going to redo the. Um, sorry for knocking the microphone. I'm going to redo the t-shirts over here. Um, these are all by Red Mist, and uh, they're really awesome. There's about four or five different t-shirts. They're all flexi color. They all use like Planko signage, and uh, they made a, a rack as well to hang them on. There's another clothes rack somebody else has made, and uh, and yeah, we put those down. The reason this isn't a full Pinewood Hills video um, is to be honest with you, the game is just a bit bit goopy at the minute. It's a bit janky. Um, the two major issues are there seems to have been a, a big loss in frame rate uh, with the uh, with the update that, that brought the team makers toolkit to us. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, Pinewood Hills was starting to crawl a little, but I could pretty much average around 20 something FPS, which was playable and it was doable. And I could pause the game and whack the settings down to low and, and building it relatively comfortably. Uh, since theme makers has come out, it, it's down to sometimes like five or six. It's, it's a noticeable difference, you know what I mean? Rather than just oh, there's more stuff in the in the game now, it just it seems like something's a little off. Um, and also the uh, the the flexi the the, the 3D gizmo thing uh, is all over the place. It used to be a little bit funky anyway, but I don't know whether they're trying to fix it and in doing so have, uh, have made it a little bit worse. Basically, if you had two items together and tried to do a uh, 3D gizmo, it would try and work out the middle of them and, and then be able to move them together. And, and you know, five times out of ten it worked and five times out of ten it didn't, but uh, it was always nice to have it. Um, and now it doesn't seem to work at all. It just always goes back to the world axis, which, um, which can often not be great for you. So, um, they're both issues that Frontier are aware of, they're both issues that Frontier are working on, and I'm most likely expecting some sort of fix, um, or at least a, you know, a, a good go at a fix, by the time uh, the, the, uh, the next uh, DLC comes out, which is going to be the Magnificent Rise DLC, which looks awesome by the way. Uh, so we'll men briefly mention that while we place down these awesome mugs and Planet Coaster DVD racks. Um, yeah, they are... Uh, um, uh, gonna give nine rides. Oh, by the way, I got fed up of having to try and deal with small things in the gift shop, so I thought I'd come over to Gulpy Land and just do a little bit of signage and, and ride and fencing and stuff. Um, but yeah, we're gonna um, we're gonna get a nine ride DLC. One of those rides has a variation, so ten rides basically, uh, or not, you know, nine full rides, one with like different cars, I assume, or different track or something like that. And uh, yeah, it looks awesome so far. We've seen a, a Vacoma SLC style roller coaster, which I know a lot of people have been asking for. Uh, we've seen a Grand Carousel. Uh, which looks gorgeous. Can't wait to throw that into Pinewood and replace the Venetian Carousel because because the, the lore about the carousel in Pinewood is always that it's a grand carousel and we've kind of made it work with the Venetian, but we're going to go in and fix that. Um, and also a, um, a relatively plain looking uh, trackless motion dark ride. So the, I think SeaWorld uses them. Um, I think they're similar to the new Beauty and the Beast ride that's being built at the moment. Uh, sort of very relatively plain bucket seating. Uh, again, looks good. Nice high capacity on it, which uh, which is pretty good. And it's not as themed as the Huntsman is, so you can use it for non-spooky rides. And uh, there may well be a new one out by now. I think they're releasing one a day until the pack comes out or something like that. So, uh, yeah, looking forward uh, to that. I think it's a good move with the theme makers toolkit out to focus on rides for a little while. I still think we'll go back to more traditional DLCs with scenery sets. I personally am still happy to pay for a scenery set. Uh, as good as the theme makers toolkit is, um, you know, to have that sort of 300 items that all fit with each other and have all got the perfect Planko style and optimization and stuff like that, uh, I'm more than happy to pay for that uh, alongside the theme makers toolkit. Okay, so the main thing I wanted to do in this episode actually was to show you some of the new theme makers toolkit stuff that I've been working on. Uh, we, uh, myself and today designer, do a series called Toolkit Treasures each week where we look at some of the best stuff on the workshop, but obviously I'm not going to start featuring my own stuff on there. Uh, so here's a look at some of the stuff. I've been doing myself. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, if you follow the Discord or various other platforms, you may have well seen uh, some of this already. Um, but, you know, a lot of the people who follow Geekers and purely watch the videos, which is perfectly fine. So this is a way of uh, sort of showing them 
what I've been working on as well. Started off with some signage. After the cash register that I showed in the last video uh, of this series, uh, I wanted to sort of scale it back and, and really sort of figure out what I was doing and, and try a little bit harder and to figure out techniques and stuff. Uh, whereas the cash register was a bit of a hot mess. I kind of threw every tutorial I could find at it. Uh, here I've gone back and really figured out what I was doing and why I was doing it. That's the important thing. I, I always make sure it's really important when learning a new skill that you figure out why you're pressing buttons as opposed to the tutorial told me to press the buttons. So this is what I've gone back here and done with these. They're all flexi color, at least these four on the left are. The stop sign isn't, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, we start off with the safety equipment must be worn. No entry, staff only, first aid and danger, electric shock risk. These are all uh, taken from actual UK signage, um, legal signage, and the colours are as, as well are. Although they are they are all flexicolor. Uh, the reason I didn't do it with the stop sign was a bit of an experiment, really. I found that flexicolor actually really increases the file size uh, quite a lot, uh, especially with these smaller items. It can often triple the file size. And I thought, you know what, a stop sign is always going to be red, no matter what you want to do with it. And if you want to change the colour of it, then you're weird. So uh, unless there's a very, very specific use case where you're maybe building a a funny road ride or something and you want some wacky signs and stuff 99% uh, of the time you're going to need a red one so I've made it not uh, flexi color just to see how much of a difference it made with the file size and it really is pretty huge um, the stop sign I, I'm not planning on doing any more traffic signs but this one was so requested the amount of people who asked me oh could you do a stop sign I could really do with one and the game doesn't have one so uh, so I went ahead and did that and um, after I kind of figured out flexi color and a little bit better at the signage I went to uh, to this uh, stretch myself a little bit somebody um, quite rightly pointed out on the discord that if you're not pushing yourself you're not really learning so uh, I moved away from just making boxes that had nice patterns on them like those signs are basically and actually modeled something uh, this time really taking into account things like poly count normals um, uh, things like that and also I tried alphas for the first time here so an alpha channel is basically a way of telling the game some uh, how uh, visible visible something is um, without having to really change the model itself so you'll see the holes here in the um, in the in the top of the drainage thing there they're, they're not really there as far as the model is concerned it's just an alpha channel uh, telling the game that they're invisible and it, it's a very cost-effective way of making stuff um, with small holes in it basically it's used a lot for things like fencing and stuff um, wire fencing so you don't actually have to have a model that has all these amazing wire fence details on instead it's just an alpha channel telling the game that uh, the holes are uh, uh, the holes are there couldn't figure out how to do a mop bucket so I've kind of cheated and just have them had the mop handle going into some dirty water um, but still think that turned out pretty okay um uh, yeah happy with it again it looks a little uh like uh i don't know what the word is really you can kind of see the polygons and that but you compare it to some of the similar size stuff in the game it actually is about right a lot of the stuff in the game is quite sort of uh, polygony and, and again the idea is that really you're playing from sort of this distance and, and at that distance it starts to look really nice and smooth uh, and then finally this was actually done last night i couldn't sleep last night I've, i'm suffering from insomnia a little bit at the minute and then um, uh, I was up watching TV till about 4 in the morning and I thought, no, do you know what, forget it. If I'm awake, I might as well do something useful. So I came onto the computer and very quickly made uh, this. So maybe go through an extra pass where I redo some of the side textures, but um, I had a lot of fun making this, getting some screenshots in game of the kids and uh, the characters and sort of photoshopping them all together to look a little bit like a, a typical... It's meant to be an MB games. If, if you're in the UK, you'll know MB games very famously. They had this white bar on the side telling you how many players there were and stuff. And um, here I've done a Geekism game. So really happy with that. It's turned out great for you, Geek sets and stuff um, a couple of people have said it's a little bit pixelated if you zoom in but you know what yeah it is uh, but to be honest with you like anything in the game is pixelated when you zoom in uh, that's 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 uh, let me show you that's uh, kind of the point so if you look at this similar sort of uh, size and scale uh, whoops you can see that it's, it's also quite pixelated here look um, and that's just, you know, because the game isn't built to be played like this. The problem is people come in and put stuff out of the theme maker's toolkit and come in to have a look at it and go, oh, it's a bit pixelated. But really, you don't sit and look this close. You're most likely playing from maybe here or even here. You know, once stuff's placed down, uh, you're actually zooming out a little bit, aren't you, into your uh, your park. So it's all the way of sort of keeping it optimized, making it nice and small. This 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 box here is 0.2 megabytes. It's one of the smallest things on the workshop uh, yeah, yeah, because it should be. You're going to be putting 10 to 20 of these down in each gift up. So it's... It needs to be really well optimized. Uh, anyway, I feel like I'm preaching. I, you know, I'm still very much a learning process with this, so um, I've still got a lot to learn. But the stuff I'm making, I'm trying to keep a few key factors in mind. One, I want it to look very planko. Two, I want it to be usable. Um, and I want it to fill gaps that you can't do with in-game stuff. I've seen a few people make stuff that uh, you can quite easily make with in-game things and, and not necessarily use too many pieces as well. I, I want to make stuff that 
you would struggle to make uh, with the in-game products. So things with uh, fine uh, print detail like these or just with fine smaller items. I really struggled to make a mop bucket in-game, so uh, I added one in. Uh, and also, I wanted to be well optimized. I wanted it to be nice and small so you can throw them in the parks and have very little uh, recuperations. Uh, so... Thank you very much for watching. Again, apologies it wasn't a full Pinewood episode today. Um, hopefully, with the new update in a few weeks, we'll get some fixes to the gizmo uh, and the frame rate, um, and we can get back into working there properly. Until then, I'm kind of happy for my Planco time to be spent on Theme Makers Toolkit stuff. Uh, hopefully, that's okay for you folks as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't, give us a like. It really does help out the channel. If you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, you can pop those down in the comments. If you fancy a chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. If you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so over on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link for that in the description. Thank you very much to all of our patrons who make these videos possible through their support at patreon.com slash geekism. And don't forget to check out our affiliate links, get yourself some cheap games and other goodies, and help the channel out while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.